All right. Welcome, everyone, to another Diverse Solutions webinar. And I'm actually very, very excited today. Uh, we have two very special guests. Nicole Nicolay, otherwise known as Nick Nick. I think I will always refer to her as Nick Nick. And Chad Johnson, uh, both from Agent Evolution. And you'll probably, well, you'll definitely see them hanging around the various agent reboots that are taking place around the country. So um, very happy to have them. Um, if you want, if you're not familiar with what we're going to talk about today, the topic is WordPress. Um, both Nick Nick and Chad have a lot of experience. They started uh, My Tech Opinion a while back. Uh, Nick Nick's been emceeing the what is it, 24 uh, agent reboots across the uh, across the country. Nick Nick. Yep, 24 this year. We're going to. We just got back from Canada, and we're also going to Hawaii this year. <laughs> we talked about that. I think we all need to make the trip out there. Open invite. Anyone that wants <laughs> to join us. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> and, and when it comes to kind of knowing technology, when it comes to uh, understanding technology, knowing what works, what doesn't, uh, they've really done a phenomenal job establishing my tech opinion as sort of a go-to resource. Um, and that's kind of, tell us a little bit about how you guys started Agent Evolution, if you don't mind, Chad and Nick. Well, gosh, you know, I, I, you started out with the right, on the right foot. You know, everything truly has been, uh, professionally has been birthed from the blog My Tech Opinion, which we started in 2005. And um, along the way, you know, we kind of settled into our niche expertise, Chad being in, uh, in web design and me in the education speaking realm. And there just came a point in time where we kind of looked at each other and said, you know, we're doing all this uh, kind of separately. I think we should put uh, two heads together and, and uh, make a go of, of providing a service and coupling that service with phenomenal education so that people find greater success in what they're doing. And Chad, do you have anything to add to that? I think that covers it pretty much. We just found that mm -hmm. uh, we could do what we love for a living and, and went for it. Yeah, and now we have a, a nice team. Gosh, almost you know, we're almost to double digits in our team members here, and that's we've awesome. Got phenomenal designers and and uh, coders and wonderful teams. So we're pretty lucky. So let's lay out the agenda. What are we going to talk about today? Oh gosh, we're, <laughs> we are going to give a little uh, potpourri, if you will, of, of WordPress 101. So we're going to talk a little bit about why and how real estate agents are using WordPress as their professional website. Because I think there's often a uh, misunderstanding that you need a WordPress blog site in addition to your professional website. So we'll go through that. Uh, well, then we're going to talk about getting started. What are some of the, you know, we're going to break it down into just two main important areas when you're getting started. Uh, number three, we're going to talk about establishing an editorial calendar. So what do you write about? How do you find great success in, what, uh, in blogging and doing it consistently? Chad's going to go a little technical on us and go live. Not too technical, but yeah. actual WordPress, hands-on. So, so we're going to give you a little hands-on with custom menus and organizing your site. And then a little, little bonus at the end, a little plug-in showcase. So what tools are agents using and finding great success? And plugins, you know, for those of you that aren't as familiar, they just are simply a feature that you add to your blog that enhances the content, enhances the usability, and gives something uh, really great for your users to take advantage of, right? Yeah, a little frosting for the cupcake. So, what do I, you say? Does that sound okay for that, BZ? That sounds perfect. So, a couple of uh, housekeeping items for those of you that do have any questions. I'm gonna let Chad and Nick Nick fire through what's, uh, what we're gonna cover today. If you have any questions, feel free to use the GoToMeeting chat. Drop in your question in there, and I'll make sure we ask both Nick Nick and Chad. And also, if you want to use the DS University hashtag, I see some of you hanging out there already. Go ahead and post your question there, and we'll make sure to ask them. So, yeah, I definitely have that on the side over here, so I'm watching that hashtag as well. And, and of course, Rubizi, you can cut me off at any time with any questions. <laughs> Don't Feel worry, free. I'll behave. So tell uh, us, why, Word, right. why WordPress? <laughs> okay, so why WordPress? And we're going to get to some of the really meaty benefits here in a second. But just let's, let's run through s some obvious things, right? Most, most people know that WordPress 
uh, started as a blogging platform and consider it a blogging platform. Uh, it started way back in 2003. But since then, it has greatly evolved uh, into so much more, a full-blown CMS, content management system. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of people, a lot of real estate uh, agents in particular, and a lot of our clients will come up and say, you know, I need a blog. I, I have this professional site over here, but I need a blog too. And, and that, that's kind of how things were uh, in, the, in the very beginning. But yeah, now... Now people are realizing, you know, I don't want to have my web presence, you know, uh, just scattered all about. I really want to have a consistent, strong web presence. I want to have one place people can go and know that this is my hub online. And so uh, WordPress is, is your professional website platform that also has some, some greater functionality with that. Yeah. Just think of WordPress as, as software that runs your website. So you may be more familiar with 10 years ago where if you wanted a 10-page website, 10 pages of code were created. WordPress is actually just software that has other software pieces, the plugins we'll talk about, that expand upon it. And it just makes it so that you can work more efficiently. And I think one thing that's phenomenal to me, and Chad, you, you clue me in on, on these numbers all the time because we keep seeing it growing, and that's that nearly 14% of all websites, probably more than that now, have on the internet, so of all websites on the internet, have been created using the WordPress platform, 14%. I mean, so that tells you right there uh, that, you know, WordPress is a strong platform. It's got a great community, great support, a lot of developers, coders building and working with it, and, uh, you know, I think it's also good to mention too that what you think might be a different website platform when you're on uh, WordPress or visiting a website, you might not even know that it's actually on WordPress. Yeah, it's really so, hard to tell. So here, here's, and, a, um, yeah. here's a question for you, and I know that we can probably debate this one all day, but uh, mm -hmm. we have one of uh, our listeners, Mark, who asked what's the difference between WordPress and Drupal and you know, a lot of these other various platforms. I know the answer to this one. Uh, I want to yeah. hear your guys' opinion why WordPress as opposed to any of the other various platforms on there. I know that we can design a site that doesn't necessarily look like what we consider a blog using WordPress, but why WordPress in that case? Yeah, um, you know, I'll jump in and answer that one. Uh, Drupal and Joomla um, are other CMS uh, platforms. They actually are probably more powerful than WordPress. but In some ways. In some ways. You know, they, they've been more of a traditional CMS, but um, they're more difficult to work with, more expensive. Um, the just the sheer number of, I mean, so many tens of millions of websites running WordPress, and so many tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of developers developing for WordPress. It's made it so that um, you've got great plugins, great solutions. IDX companies like Diverse Solutions that are building plugins specifically for WordPress. Um, it's just the, the sheer numbers of it, and with the less power in a lot of ways in Drupal or Joomla, it's actually easier to use. And that's where I was, I'm going to cut in here <laughs> and um, come back to the ease of use. When it comes down to it, we're trying to showcase why WordPress is so important, and that comes down to the user. We want to have control. Agents want to have control of their website. They want to be able to make modifications, add their listings easily, add other features easily, and WordPress does that for you. I don't know many agents that are going to sit down and, and think about, you know, wanting to code and, and deal with, you know, Joomla or Drupal or any of those others. So um, anything you wanted to add to that, Ricardo? No, I think you guys nailed it. Okay, cool. So let's get to some other greater, great benefits, which we did talk about a few of them. Uh, you know, WordPress tends to be more affordable, uh, be, and that's, you know, there is the hosting cost, which is a monthly cost, and then there's usually a fee associated with getting your WordPress site designed. Unless you're a total techie guy that wants to, you know, tinker here and tinker there, but I know most agents, they want to get to business, get down to business with their clients. So, um, you know, the, the cost of creating a customized WordPress site can greatly vary. It can be anywhere from a few hundred bucks to thousands of dollars. It really just depends on your goals. But for the most part, you know, Chad, what do you think? What do most agents spend on a WordPress site? You know, it can be all over the board. I would say, you know, uh, there's, there's groupings. A lot of folks will do it almost completely for free or a couple hundred bucks. 
then there's that fifteen hundred to two thousand dollar range for folks that get something kind of semi custom and then I've seen some people think five grand, but that five grand is for a site that ten years ago would have cost twenty five thousand dollars so yeah. it is more affordable it's just the caliber you want to go to so and uh, you know the nice the beauty of WordPress is it's very plug and play it's got a flexible interface and so you know, your site doesn't have to look like the static website of your your colleague or your competitor. It can really meet, it contain the content and the features that make the most sense for your expertise and deliver the, the great uh, informative resources that your clients or your targets need. WordPress is also search engine optimized, SEO, meaning your site can be found more easily online. And a lot of what's done in SEO, I mean, you don't really have to worry about that. WordPress does it for you, right, Chad? Yeah, actually, Matt Cutts of Google said at a WordPress convention that 80 to 90 percent of what you want or what Google wants is done by WordPress when it's configured properly. Uh, the last 10 to 20 percent is about your content, uh, your, the the relevance of your content to people's searches, and your reputation, which happens to you know, has to do with inbound links and promoting yourself using social media. And a couple other great great benefits of WordPress are the functionality. So you know, you not only have this beautiful looking professional website, right, but you've got blog, blogging, publishing functionality, meaning you've got the ability to easily add content, fresh new content that positions you as that trusted advisor, that speaks to your expertise, that speaks to your targets, and that functionality is key, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Uh, and the last one is really own it, you know. Um, it, when it comes down to creating a hub for yourself online, creating content, online and sharing that content with your targets. If you're creating a hub uh, that's on a static website, you can't, you, you, you're definitely tied uh, as far as what you can add to your website and owning that content. If you're starting on a blog network, if you're putting all your content inside Facebook or somewhere else, you just, you never know who's going to, at the end of the day, have control over that. So own your own content uh, on your site. And truthfully, WordPress also solves the biggest challenge that is faced by real estate agents right now, trying to market their business, your business, to your sphere, to your targets, is a huge challenge because we've got so many communication channels right now. We've got, uh, you know, we're, we're at this intersection of both traditional means of marketing. You know, people are still expecting uh, those print pieces. You've got people in your sphere that still expect email, and then you've got you know, also a huge chunk of your sphere that wants to communicate online, that wants to see you inside Facebook. So how, as a real estate professional, are you going to be able to be successful in your business, but also market your business across multiple communication channels? Well, WordPress rocks it because they give you literally an opportunity to take advantage of a very succinct approach to marketing um, and what we call the hub and spoke approach. And you've probably heard this by other great speakers that have mentioned this hub and spoke approach, and that's really utilizing WordPress as your online hub, posting great content. So if you've got an article on three great listing or three great uh, investing ideas and you post that article to your WordPress site, you're adding great content now that, again, positions you as that trusted advisor online, helps you be found online. But you can take that content, utilize the functionality inherent in WordPress, and you can push that content and publish it out to places like Facebook, uh, where your sphere hangs out, to places like Twitter, where you might interact with new locals, locals you might not already know. You can utilize it for LinkedIn, has a fabulous WordPress application that aggregates every single post you add to your WordPress site. You can also take advantage of more traditional means of marketing with that article that you've created and added to your WordPress site. Uh, utilize it for an email newsletter. Use part of it or portion of it for a print piece that's very targeted. Create a YouTube video out of it. So now, with WordPress, you've got the ability to create one fabulous piece of content that is relevant and meaningful to your targets and share it in multiple communication channels. And I think that is truly one of the powers of WordPress. Would you not agree? Oh, definitely. For sure. OK. You agree there, Ricardo? 1,000%. <laughs> OK, good. Just making sure. 
All right, so now that we've got through the why, let's, let's really get to the meat, and that's getting started. And I would say that there are two main areas t that really need to, two important choices. You know, there are a lot of different little steps into getting started with WordPress, but let's just, let's just focus on two areas. Is that okay for today? I don't want to overwhelm anyone, and I get overwhelmed myself. <laughs> so, um, and that's really choosing a domain name and choosing the platform. So let's talk about choosing a domain name first. And I know, Chad, you know, we can say, you know, the, the domain name should reflect your brand or maybe your geographic location uh, or a demo, particular demographic. Now, you've worked with a lot of our clients on choosing their domain name. What are some tips that you offer them? You know, it, it, it's one of the toughest decisions you're going to make, and it's something that you, it's really tough to change later on, especially since Google reputation is tied to that domain in so many ways. Uh, you know, I tell them, first of all, no hyphens. Um, you know, that's atrocious. <laughs> it, easy to remember, easy to spell. Don't get creative on your spelling. Um, uh, easy to type. Um, and, you know, something that you're going to want to be able to tell people over the phone a thousand times a month. Yeah, um, short and sweet, not like yeah. living here in Northern California is great. Really yeah. great. With, with <laughs> dashes in between <laughs> each word. Yeah. With dashes, exactly. Um, you know, it, it's something you're going to be living with a little bit longer. So also think about it as a business, you know, a, an extension of your business. Uh, it, you may want it to be a niche website, and so having a, a small location in the domain is great, but you really can't grow beyond that in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, make sure it's going to reflect your business in five years from now. Um, you know, we got some examples. The White Oaks blog is a, a blog about a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it works great. He's got some great success, but it definitely kind of ties him on in. Um, you know, beyond that, I mean, good I, luck. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I I love um, I love the niche ones like high heeled homeowners. Uh, that's Catherine Cannon. Uh, Six eighty homes. That's a location. Tri Valley three six five. You know. Uh, the Ingles, that's a team. So it really can encompass a variety of strategies, and, and we'll talk about a little bit about this uh, more. One thing you should do before you put all your eggs in one basket is right. definitely go, go to a place like domain.com and just search to make sure that domain is available. Um, and also, don't have the word Realtor in there right. because you will get a cease and desist letter from NAR. You don't have legal use to use the word Realtor.com. I thought they could use it now. No, no, they still. No, uh, no, no. Okay, so choosing a platform. Obviously, we're not talking about Blogger today, right? No, no <laughs> Blogger today. We're talking about WordPress. Um, it's important to know that there are two versions of WordPress: WordPress.com and WordPress.org. Both are free. .com is one that is hosted for you, so there's no cost. You literally can start a blog in five minutes. Uh, and .org is also free, but you've got to host it yourself, and you know, obviously, you've got to apply a theme. And you know, Chad actually has a great, a little analogy about WordPress.com versus .org. So take it away, Chad. Excellent. I can't take credit for this one. Is actually Matt Mullenweg, the 27-year-old genius that uh, created WordPress and heads up the company behind it. He compared it to owning a home versus renting a home. Uh, .com is like renting a home. Uh, you don't have to worry about the maintenance. Uh, your hot water, hot water heater breaks. The landlord is going to come out and fix it. But you can't start tearing down walls or tearing out trees and things like that. You don't have as much control. There's not as many features with .com. .org is like buying the home. You can do whatever you want. You can just demolish the whole thing. But um, no one's there to do the maintenance. So there's a little more work. But it's more powerful, and it's really the only one that we, you know, really recommend because a lot of the cool features are only available with .org. The best features. The best. So speaking of the cool factor and why we recommend .org, let's, let's take a look at the power of WordPress in four specific examples. So these are real agents that are using WordPress as their professional sites in different ways. Ready? Ready to go shopping for, for your uh, strategy here on WordPress, Chad? <laughs> yeah, let's go shopping. Okay. I'm a, I have to compare everything to shopping. Sorry. <laughs> I'm in a shoe, shoe zone right now. Um, so the first example that we have here this is a WordPress site that's focused on geographic, a geographic marketing strategy. This is a real estate team 
where they're doing the whole phenomenon of the 365. And actually, uh, this happens to be my parents. I tell them 14 times not to go this route, but they don't listen. So I just let them go for it. And hey, they're having great success. So they're sharing one great uh, thing to do in the Tri-Valley area uh, here in California. And they're focusing on five cities, Livermore, Dublin, Pleasanton, San Ramon, Danville. That's their expertise. They lived and worked in this area for 30 years. So they're finding great success in just blogging and sharing, adding content about all things to do one day or one activity every day uh, in these five cities. And so uh, they're really, they're finding a lot to talk about. They're having a lot of great success. They're interfacing with local business owners. Uh, and, and they are also talking about real estate on here too. They have a real estate section. You can see Tri-Valley Real Estate where they provide some market uh, you know, information and um, other other contact information for more detailed real estate. Now, going a little bit different with the geographic, you could focus on a region, you could focus on a city, like Cody has done here. He's focused on Calgary. You could even focus on a neighborhood, like you mentioned the White Oaks blog. Um, I believe Crystal Toast, who's also a REMAX agent here in Calgary, she's focused, created a neighborhood-focused uh, WordPress site, and just to really drive in and talk about that niche and provide community information, and uh, it's a great way to go with your blog. The next example is uh, creating a WordPress site built around your niche. So whether that niche is, in this case, like Marisa, it's modern homes. Uh, in Catherine Cannon's case, it's uh, high-heeled homeowners, you know. Uh, so I see I keep bringing the shoe thing in. Uh, <laughs> But it could be luxury real estate, it could be green building, and it could also incorporate that geographic location. And of course, if you Google, you know, modern homes of Portland, who are you going to find? Ghostbusters? <laughs> I doubt it. Okay. This next example of a WordPress site, a beautiful WordPress site, is Torontoism. This is uh, good old Richard Silver, who I love, out in Toronto. And you know, if you talk to Richard, he'll tell you, you know, I, I wasn't too sure about the WordPress thing, I, but I was sure that I wanted a professional-looking website that looked different than all my competitors, that really spoke to my own uniqueness and really captured the essence of Toronto. And so that's why he went about utilizing WordPress as a platform for his, his uh, website. And now he'll tell you, you know, he's actually an exclusive listing agent. But he gets 30% of, he makes 30% of his income off of referral fee, fees uh, from buyers finding and from Googling and finding his website in the Toronto area and learning about Toronto from his website. So I think that's pretty cool. And then our last example, my go-to girl, Heather Elias. And I love Heather. She's actually teamed up with her husband, uh, so Loco Heather and Loco Cowboy on Twitter. And they're rocking it. They're with great information, photos and uh, new developments, information about their market. They really dial in the market stats on a regular basis and updates and fill people in on what's happening in their neighborhood, what's happening in their community in terms of, uh, you know, where the market's headed and what their home is worth. Um, and, and one other thing that they do, Heather does phenomenally well, is she creates content on a regular basis really highly relevant content that informs, that inspires, that educates, and it ultimately influences those targets that she's trying to reach to take action. And I think that uh, really leads me in to what we want to talk about next, and that's content. And uh, I think that's probably, Chad, you could probably chime in here because I know it, one of the challenges, another challenge faced by real estate professionals is they want this professional site, they want the flexibility, they want to showcase their expertise, and then when it comes down to they've got this gorgeous site ready to go, the content piece, you know, and so that's why we uh, definitely focus on, that's why we've te teamed up chat is because providing that education to to really get people started with what do I blog about, what do I talk about, you know, I just... Sometimes it's very clear for those of us that love writing, and for others of us, it's not so clear. So establishing an editorial calendar, a blog content plan, is definitely something you want to get started right away from the get-go when you're launching your site so that you can start with a bang. You can have content consistently being shared, again, positioning you as that, that trusted advisor. So 
before we can actually get that editorial calendar underway, there's a few how-to steps that I want to share with you. You guys ready for those? Of course. Okay, good. Just checking to make sure. So a couple of important questions that you're going to want to ask before you, before you actually sit down, you want to make sure that you ask yourself these questions so that you are creating content that best represents your own expertise and that also delivers something that your targets want. It makes very, uh, a very clear message uh, being shaped from your blog. And so those questions are, who are you and what are your strengths? What's that, that expertise that you draw upon? Truly, what, where did your last couple transactions come from? What's, what strategy is already working in your business? And then who clearly are your targets and what do they want from you? What kind of content? So start asking yourself these questions and that can actually lead you to uh, creating what I call a blog topic list. And this is just an ongoing list of ideas of things that you're passionate about talking about, things that you're excited, you'd be excited to share and write about from your blog and share, uh, obviously, in other places. Do, do they all have to be about real estate, Nick Nick? Absolutely. You know, that's a great question because when I, I've shared this, uh, these ideas before and uh, people, uh, sometimes I'll start talking about sharing, you know, talking about wineries, right, and um, mm -hmm. schools and, and I've had people ask me questions when I'm speaking like, why would anyone want to hear about wineries and schools? And I said, well, why would anyone want to hear about, you know, listings when they're not ready to move right away? <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, it, it's going to help you with Google as well because you're you're relevant to people for a longer period of time. So there's going to be more people talking about you on uh, Twitter and Facebook, um, be, you know, even those that aren't ready to buy or sell right now. And let's face it, let's talk about your targets. Let's not be. It, it's important to be agent centric in knowing what you're good about talking about, knowing what your expertise and your knowledge base is. But let's be client-centric. Let's be community-focused. Let's share the things that our targets actually care about. And that's, and that's because we, we hear it from people like Sherry Chris, you know, with lifestyle branding. Uh, we had our, our cohort, uh, Brian Clark from Copy Blogger on. We talked about at one of the reboots how buying a home and moving and the whole process, it's really investing in the next chapter of your life. And so when you think about planning for that chapter as, as a consumer, you think about all the aspects that incorporate that listing, that home. You think about the neighborhood, the schools. You know, what are the school boundaries? What, what, um, you know, what schools are available to my kids? You know, what kind of activities and and nightlife and weekend things am I going to be doing with my family? Uh, and so all of those things are really important. As Chad said, they also play a role too in helping you be found online. And also, again, think even further. Thinking further out, when I mentioned the distribution strategy, not only are you adding great content that shows you're a local market expert on your website, but now think how much more powerful sharing uh, a community feature, a neighborhood feature inside of Facebook or Twitter or anywhere else, how much more interaction are you going get, to get from some, sharing something like that versus just sharing a listing? I'm not saying that you can't share listings on those places, I'm just saying when you do share listings on the, in those places, you got to make it more interesting and you've got to tell a story around it. So, um, so again, back to the blog content list, you know, start making a list of all the things that you're passionate about talking about. And just because, you know, I, I don't want to leave you hanging here and I want to help you uh, kickstart that list, I've put together 35 ideas for you. So are you ready to roll with these guys? Let's jump in. All right, here we go. Rabizi, how are we doing? Any more any more questions over on your end? We actually have quite a few questions. <laughs> yeah, you want to save them or hit me now? I'm going to save them. Okay. I, I think I want to save them because the, the biggest challenge for a lot of folks, or at least what I see, I think yeah. a lot of real estate blogs fail because people stop writing before they have enough time to get found. Yeah. So, so I really think it's important that you're covering uh, a lot of these topic lists. Um, because a lot of folks will struggle for two reasons. One is a lack of time, and of course, we all want more time to do more things. And mm -hmm. and the other is we don't know what to write about. Should I just write about my listings? No, because that's that's that can boring. be boring to somebody. <laughs> I was trying to be nice about it, Chad. But but <laughs> yeah. yes, the content Sorry, can be very like dry that. and boring if someone's not in the market to buy now at this very moment. 
So, so yeah. talking about those other things, I think, is, is really key. So I would okay. love to hear some topics. Okay, good, because I have 35 of them. Uh, and I don't have 35 slides, though, so that's good for everybody, <laughs> okay? I do have five slides. I have broken these topics up into five key areas, and, uh, and we are going to make this available to you. I, I know Rabizi is going to make this, the, these slides available, and I do have these topics on my tech opinion, too. But here we, we go. The first section is obviously we've got to get hyper-local. That's a big buzzword, but local flavor truly is where it's at. It's what your clients, what, what your... It's what people are interested in. It's not what's for dinner, but it is what, it, well, it actually could be what's for dinner, but it's what people are truly interested in. So that could be anything from, you know, the arts, uh, business, new businesses, charity, fundraisers, again, education, school scores, entertainment. I don't, I don't know about you, but, you know, I got two kids. I'm always looking for things to do. It's just the idea of selling the community beyond just the four walls and the roof of the house. Mm -hmm. And again, telling a story about, you know, the neighborhood, the best features of the community. You're selling a lifestyle. You're selling the next chapter. So local flavor. This next section is the real estate insider because I do have clients that come to me and say, you know, Nick, Nick, I am not going to talk about the community. I am not touchy-feely like that. I'm just, I'm like, clearly you need to get out. But at any rate, uh, you know, you should be sharing what comes natural to you because obviously that's going to play well for you. It's going to come naturally when you write. Uh, so, you know, play off of those strengths, those strategies, your niche expertise. And if you find yourself very enraptured in giving great uh, tips and, and advice, I know Dennis Plintz uh, up in, in Canada, he really has done this with video very well and just really being a, a, re a real estate resource to people. And that could be anything from sharing trends uh, and market data, to new laws that are affecting real estate in your particular area, investing, uh, rate and loan info, you know. And if you don't have a particular expertise that you do want to deliver to your targets, you know, get a guest blogger. Get somebody else to help you out, uh, maybe somebody in the mortgage industry. Uh, neighborhood spotlight, new developments, buyer-seller tools. Okay, this next section is the homeowner how-to, and, and I always joke about Reggie in this section, so he's going to get mad because I'm going to do it again, but, you know, I was told I was marrying someone handy when uh, I got married to Reggie, but clearly he's handy with technical computer stuff, not uh, unclogging toilets, but <laughs> anyways. Uh, so this is really an area that's going to help your people that are are. are your clients now or the people that are thinking, you know, I got to get, what can I do to, to prep myself so and get, and get ready to sell if I'm ready or, or um, et cetera. So anything from seasonal tips to prepping to sell to interior design and staging and, and any of those handy helper tips for those of us that, that, like to, that like to be a little handy around the house. Show people how to replant the lawn when they buy a foreclosure that the whole yard's dead. <laughs> I, I think these are I think these are particularly fun if you could do them on video. And actually, Chad, to kind of bounce off on that one, what uh, one real estate agent did, uh, Irina at PasadenaViews.com, and then um, oh yeah, Lori, she's great. Yeah, Lori March over at ImproveMental.com. What they did is they did a foreclosure Friday video series where they'd highlight a specific foreclosed property in the market. They would go mm -hmm. to the property and then Irina would record Lori, who's an interior designer, walking through the property, making, um, giving advice on how they might improve or remodel this property and then uh, an analysis as far as what is it going to cost to make improvements, and what the price is, and whether or not it's a good investment. I thought no, that that's was, powerful. I like that. I thought that was clever execution. Very clever. And and again, a great way a great way to to also think about uh, you know branching outside of writing everything. I know that for me, it's a, a lot faster if I can just turn the webcam on and just talk, or my my little handy iPhone. You know, it's just just turning it on and talking and sharing some advice and tips via video can be a lot faster than sitting down and thinking you know, writing a perfect article. Okay, and the last area, oh no, it's not the last area, it's the second to last area. Uh, personality and passion, I love this one because uh, as somebody that enjoys writing, I know that I can always tell when somebody else enjoys writing because it, sh it comes through in what they're, they're, they're writing about. 
so clearly, drawing upon your own hobbies and interests and passions is going to shine through, and clearly if it pertains even to your local market, say with restaurants, I happen to live in Livermore where we have 50 plus wineries, um, hobbies like golf and gardening, you know, gardening also speaks to home improvement too. Chad, I threw in recipes for you since you're our chef extraordinaire, <laughs> uh, but I am always looking for things like that. Vacation fun, sometimes things, vacation ideas that are close to home is, are always helpful. Uh, I know. I know that uh, I'm a dog lover. I'm always looking for, for good uh, dog parks and uh, just, you know, even telling stories about locals, about the local community, the history of the local community, things like that. And then our last area is the splice and dice. This is the really repurposing of content that you might even already have created or that other people have created. So. This could be, say you've uh, gotten started uh, back in the day on Active Rain in a blog network, for example, and you've got some great content, but uh, some content that's timeless, right? So it's got to be timely or timeless, and uh, you could repurpose that uh, in a number of ways, through video or through podcasting. Uh, I know also another great way to, to utilize content without actually creating it yourself is curating it. So you are ha having a hand in organizing it and adding your own opinion. So you might find a couple of really resourceful uh, articles in your area, and you might want to reshare those in your own Friday fun wrap-up or, you know, whether it's just in a, a post that, about a particular uh, aspect of the community or something where you have uh, other people's articles that you're sharing as resources. All right, so that's Splice and Dice. And now, what do you do once you've got the uh, a healthy blog topic list going? Well, you need us to schedule time to write, whether it's in an Excel spreadsheet or an at-a-glance calendar or in the plugin I'm going to show you in just a second. You got to make sure that you're scheduling time to write. And you know, a lot of people will say, well, how many times should I write? How many posts should I do a week? And there is a direct correlation between the more you post, the more eyeballs you're going to have because you're going to train readers to keep coming back for more great content. Now, that doesn't mean that if you can't post every day, you should just give up before you start. I think if you can even train yourself to post twice a week, you're on, uh, you're on great footing. Would you not say, would you not agree there, Chad? Yeah, twice a week and just consistent. You know, don't burn out and you know, go crazy and a month later do nothing else. Uh, the best websites, the most successful websites aren't necessarily the most technological websites. They're usually the ones that just the people have been the most consistent. So when you have that healthy blog topic list that you've got going, that's an ongoing list, just take a, a, a month at a time, plug in a couple of posts that you plan to write and post for that, for uh, two posts a week. I always also schedule a little read and research time. That's time for me to collect my ideas and thoughts about what I want to write about, maybe actually do some of the pre-writing on it, maybe do an outline uh, for what I want to write about. And then that way I'm really setting myself up for success for getting those posts done throughout the week. And of course you don't have to stick to this, but at least it's planned. And if something, some great idea comes, uh, comes across or something more timely, you can always swap an idea out. But at least you've got something planned. And that way when you sit down to write, you're not going, well, what am I going to write about today? Hmm. Now one other handy dandy feature, and the reason why we love WordPress.org so much is because we have access to these great plugins. Plugins again are features of a website that make us more efficient and also deliver better, uh, better information to our clients. Uh, for this one, this is the WordPress editorial calendar. So when you add this in, uh, it really creates a calendar in the WordPress admin. So rather than having that Excel spreadsheet or jotting down on an at-a-glance calendar what you're going to write about, you can literally plan out your blog posts, uh, even get them started in, uh, in post format, and you can even schedule them out to be delivered. So you can do this all from the WordPress uh, admin, right, Chad? You've, you've got some clients that are, are loving this too. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, Nothing ever happens unless you have a game plan, and this really helps you to plan it out and you know stick to it. If not, I'll blog tomorrow. I'll blog tomorrow. I'll blog tomorrow. Uh, that's been my life for way too long. <laughs> All right. So now uh, there's the chef, Chef Chad, 
and uh, we're going to actually hand over controls to Chad, and he's going to get a little technical, <clears throat> just a little, right? Um, I'm actually really looking You're gonna forward. You're going to give him control? N unless you can, but I I'll... am. I can give him control right now. Yeah, go for it. But so what I was going to say, what I'm really looking forward to in, in this next part is I've seen a lot of real estate sites, and I think the you have maybe the initial five seconds when somebody lands on your site to capture their attention. And if you have a very cluttered navigation, you're going to lose their attention really quickly. So I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing how we might take structure of that layout and sort of functions uh, through some of these steps here. Yeah, I think that's key. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you, Ricardo. It's um, when someone comes to me with a website and says, hey, what do you think? Most of the time, I think, wow, there's just too much stuff here. Um, it's just overly packed. And I think that, you know, some of the downsides of, of uh, the amount of control that a, a website owner has um, has exacerbated into you know these you know way too many options and the human brain just can't handle them um, uh, ha can't handle that much that many you know 30 different links and a list or drop down menus with extending menus coming out from there it, it's just gotten crazy excellent well um, do I have control you do I gave you control. Can people see the agent? No. <laughs> no, I see your screen. Uh, the custom menus slide. Custom menus. Okay. Minimize the uh, maybe the presentation window. Let's see. Now I got it on the viewer. Well, Nicole, I'm seeing yours. So you know what? Let me jump on yours. Yeah. Go for it. Um, here, let me. I, let me. Here, let. I'll just move out of the way. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. A little technical issue, but you know what? Out of the way. I'll just jump I'll, right I'll on in. I'll play the uh, Jeopardy music while we transition. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'm dancing right now, actually. Excellent. You just wanted me to warm up the chair for you. It's so over here. <laughs> Got a demo site right here. Excellent. So here is a demo site for us for WordPress. And then a couple of things or one question that somebody had asked uh, while we log in here was, you yeah. know, the main differences between WordPress.org and WordPress.com. And so one thing I will say, I know that we kind of jumped through some examples of sites that you were showcasing and the different elements mm -hmm. and design elements. The thing to keep in mind with dot, uh, .com is that you won't have access to a lot of the plugins or, or the ability to, to, for example, use scripts in your sidebar and things like that, um, that really the flexibility of .org provides you. So it's definitely worth the investment, in my opinion, uh, to get a hosting uh, account. You know, absolutely. You don't org. have access to the really robust plugins that can really add so much more to the functionality of your website and then it, and then couple that with the the limited theme options the theme being the look and feel the design the layout of your website is also limited uh, you know and so that's not good we're trying to move away from from having something that maybe is limiting us and that's also uh, maybe going to look like other people's site and you don't have that option to really enhance the, the look and the functionality like you do with .org. All right, Chad. Excellent. I'm up and running. Perfect. Well, um, I was asked to talk a little bit about menus and organization. And the most, most well-known menu that we work with is the main primary navigation. In WordPress, uh, as well as most modern websites, we're usually looking at a horizontal navigation. Sometimes there's sub-navigation, and there's different variations, and that's where the different themes and templates come into play. And another area where .org is going to be more, uh, give you more choices and more control than .com. This is actually a menu. Now, I went in and logged into the back end of WordPress. This may be the first time you guys are seeing WordPress. Um, the options change based on your plugins and your themes and things you add to it. Um, I think I fell in love with WordPress because I was really good at Lincoln Logs and Tinker Toys and Legos when I was a kid. And WordPress is just kind of like the website equivalent of grabbing different components and plugging them on. 
Now, up until last year, when you wanted to create different hierarchies, so create a an about um, uh, an about um, button in the main navigation, and then have sublinks, and then maybe even sub sublinks, um, you would do that through the hierarchy of the pages. Uh, I am seeing um, some sloppiness happen now that we have something called menus, where how the pages are organized has nothing to do with how the menus are. So I do want to just jump into the pages just for a second to show what good organization is. If you have a major page, a parent page, it's not going to have any hash mark or be indented. But then pages that are associated to it, like sections, so you may have neighborhoods and then a list of all the neighborhoods below it. Below it means that it's going to be indented with the hash mark. And then these here, Jordan, Nicole, Robert, and Stephanie, uh, are all indented under the About the Realtors. Uh, while this no longer has any influence on your menu, uh, your navigation, it does keep things organized so you don't get a really disorganized website. And all we're talking about here is related because it's all about the user experience. Nowadays, though, now that you get all your pages written, you can't create a menu to link to pages that don't exist. So always you create your pages first. But we create our menus from an area under appearance called menus. You'll see that I actually have a menu in here already. It's the main menu. We gave it that name. And we can see anything on the far left is going to be a main option. So home, listings, buyers, sellers, blog, about, and contact. Hmm. Those are actually the main level. Below that, if anything is below a main link and indented, it's going to be part of the drop-down. So we have four drop-down options here. And then even a third level under Buyer's FAQ, there will be a pop-out for another one there. Let me show you how easy it is to reorganize things. I decide that I would like Buyer's Tip 1, 2, whoop, and 3 to go above Buyer's FAQ in the drop-down. I click Save. Once it saves, I go back to my website. Got to refresh to see the changes. Refresh. And here we are. It's now Buyer's Tip 1, 2, 3, and then Buyer's FAQ. It's really that easy, drag and drop. Nicole's little ones can probably create a menu for us on the fly. They're pretty good, yeah. pretty handy. So let's create a new menu. Um, we've got some like 15 menus on our Agent Evolution one, kind of convoluted, but we use them for different things, sub-menus, different page menus. So let's say I wanted to create a secondary navigation. I click on the plus sign here, and it asks me to give it a name. I'm going to be really creative in my name and just call it secondary nav. And I click create menu on the right hand side to create the menu. From here, I just go down and I determine what I want to add to this. It's probably going to be pages. And your most recent pages are here under most recent. I can view them all or I can search. Just to let you know, the search is a little weak. <laughs> Usually I hit search and I can't find it even though I'm using the same name that I would. But if I could come down here and say, you know what, I'm going to make all my buyers and sellers tips go onto the secondary navigation. I click Add to Menu. There they are. I could make them in the drop-down. It's all that easy. I click Save. I've now created a menu. What if, let's say uh, an example here all the time, I've got a, um, a website with my brokerage I would like to link to. It's so simple. You come up here to custom link. Can I do too many things at once? I almost couldn't spell Typing my Typing one handed is always fun. Yeah. I give it a name. I click Add to Menu. Ta-da. Now, what if the name of the page isn't what I want to have on the, the link? Because one thing that we try to do with main navigations is for it to be simple and short. You start getting these um, 
you know, home buyer's tip one, it, it's just going to be way too long. Let's say, how about I, I activate this? I'm going to go over primary navigation is my main nav. Let me do a secondary navigation. I don't know if I have it turned on. How these work will change based on your theme. So let me do something I know will work here. I'm going to change my navigation. I just told it the primary navigation is now the secondary nav bar. I refresh. There it is. Oh, and I forgot to save. You got to save. Ta-da, there I am. This is going to go out to another website. I've got drop downs. But these are a little long, very long. Mm -hmm. So I can go and click on the little drop down arrow next to any of these and change what is said. So what if I just do buyers, buyers tip one? I hit save back over here on the right. I'm going to refresh this. Come on, come, come on, on, come on. A little bit of an internet lag. There we are, and it shortened it up. Other things that you can put in are categories as well. Let's jump into the last thing, and then we got to get into plugins here. You can use these menus that you create, not just in the main navigation, but you can put them into a sidebar. This is super helpful. I love this feature because it means that your content on your site can really be that much more powerful, right, and, and more relevant to whatever you're sharing on the page, really support the main content of the page. Definitely. Um, we developed in a, a, a framework for WordPress, a template style called Genesis, and has a thing called Simple Sidebars, where we can create new sidebars for different pages or sections of the website. So we'll actually make a sub-navigation for the neighborhood's area and have a list of every neighborhood as a navigation in the sidebar. So people can click around from one neighbor to another to another on your website until they find the neighborhood that they feel like they would uh, best like to move into. Now there is something built into WordPress called Custom Menu. This is under Widgets. I kind of jumped in there quickly. Appearance Widgets. Widgets are basically sidebar little goodies. Each of these little boxes is a widget. A lot of plugins come with widgets. Some are built into WordPress as well. This one's built in. I drag it and drop it over to the sidebar. I'm going to put this at the very top of the sidebar. I'm going to use the main navigation. And I'm going to give it a title of name example. Again, being very creative. <laughs> I hit save. That's what my job is for. I hit, yeah. Always team up with people that have the abilities you don't. <laughs> <laughs> And there we are, a huge navigational system, so a bad example, but you get the point. So you can actually have little sub-navs everywhere. That is menus. I'm going to get out of Nicole's seat now, let her jump back on over. And we're going to rock you some plugins. All right. How are we doing? We're doing For BZ, I saw we had some people asking about you know, web design, what are some good questions? And I think Ch Chad and I will definitely stick around and answer any questions. I saw someone talking about pop-up domination on there, and actually that's in our WordPress. Uh, it's in our plugin showcase right now, so let's just rock it. Let's do it. Okay, hold on one second. Here we go. Okay, so the first one, obviously, that's a gimme. You've got to have listings showcased in, and a listing tool that's extremely powerful, yeah. right, Chad? Definitely, and this is a plug-in by a company that I we, hope we kind of like. Yeah, and I hope you've heard of them before because it is our host, Diverse Solutions, and they they created a plug-in that has changed. I mean, literally changed how listings are seen by Google. Uh, I can't think of another product that for thirty bucks a month you can make it so that listings off your MLS are indexed by Google. Uh, and we have clients running off this, and all of them have success stories of the phone ringing because of them showcasing listings that they saw on tour, dropped it on in with a button and an MLS number, and sat back, and, and you know it did its work. So kudos to you, Ricardo. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, and then, of course, 
we got a couple others that we're going to roll through pretty quickly because I know we're getting low on our time here. Uh, but we've got, you know, in terms of market data, we love Altos Research. Uh, you know, Heather's a great working example of that. I know we have some other clients that really like that. Yeah, and Altos is a paid service. Mm -hmm. um, there's also one created by a Phoenix broker, real estate broker, called the Simple Real Estate Pack that brings in their free API, Trulia's free API, and a couple of other features. Um, so if you're looking for something that isn't $80 to $100 a month, that might be a good solution for you as well. Yeah. For those of you that are thinking, ah, I can only afford one blog post a month, this might be a good way to get some really robust content on your site, though, in that area. Uh, lead capture. We've got a couple here. Gravity Forms, right, Chad? Yeah, there's a lot of different systems that will add forms. Gravity Forms is by far the best, most powerful, very well supported. You're going to pay for it. I think it's like 40 bucks or something like that. But A one-time uh, fee? or One-time, yeah. One-time mm -hmm. fee. You get all your updates, and it is incredibly powerful. Uh, anything from contact forms to, you know, at the bottom of a, uh, a seller's page where you're talking about the selling options, um, you know, put in a contact form. You know, have questions on selling? Contact me. Great way to do lead capture. Now, we saw this one pop up uh, in the comments, pop-up domination. Yeah, pop-up domination is actually one that's come on pretty strong. It's about, I think, 47 bucks or something like that. It is a pop-up system that you can really, it, it's about tying into your autoresponder, your drip email system. So if you use MailChimp, iContact, uh, Constant Contact, any of the majors, AWeber, um, you can make it so that when people go to certain pages or after they've gone to five pages, a pop-up pops up asking them to put in their name and email address to sign up for your email newsletter, and away you go. Again, an example of Nicole's Hub and Spoke, where some people like to be communicated to via email, and your uh, WordPress Hub can help out with that. I don't know if you have and I just a, wanted to, go for, ahead. for that previous one, the pop-up domination, for if you... For those of you that want to see an example of that in action, go to home ownership university.com and click on any one of their blog posts. But again, it's homeownershipuniversity.com and you'll see a really sol solid example. They have the registration enabled. Uh, you know, it says register here for our upcoming webinar and they do uh, financing webinars weekly on the different types of uh, financing options that are available. And they've seen some pretty good conversion rates using that on their site. Mm -hmm. yeah. You definitely want to offer something of value and, and dial in your verbiage. Same thing with the con contact forms, you know. Make it interesting. Don't make too many. Yeah. I wanted to throw in uh, just another, I mean, we, we did mention pop-up domination. This one's just the MailChimp list subscribe form. It's just a pretty, another version of what you can do with email. Yeah, very easy to use. Um, social integration with your site is really important these days. We all know um, how important it is to share content on your own behalf, pushing out content to from your WordPress site to Facebook, Twitter, and other places. But you also want to make that content easily uh, shared by people that visit your site. So, uh, Chad, you love this Jetpack one, you know? Yeah, this is actually fairly new. It came out about six weeks ago or so. Um, it is a crossover of some of the features that were in .com, there's only a handful of reasons why you would go .com versus .org. They're now available over here. So you can share, you have social sharing. After the deadline can be activated from here. That's grammar and spell checking, which is great if you are an awful typist or speller like myself. Uh, you know, a Twitter widget is built right on in. I know there was a question in the sidebar. There's 8 million ways to add Facebook buttons and Twitter widgets and stuff. But this is one clean a user interface built by the people behind WordPress so you know it's going to be very well supported and it's hey, free. And really quickly, I should mention the Google Plus one. Oh, brand new. It's only a couple of days old. Google has come out with something that is their answer to the Facebook like button. It's called the Google Plus one. You're going to be seeing that. I mean, this is literally just a couple of days old. We're starting to put it into production. There is a Google Plus one plugin if you just want to activate a plugin. Basically, when someone clicks that they like that, it will influence your Google search results. So anyone, you know, when you're logged in as a Google user with your Google account, and I think everyone has one these days, your search results will be skewed based on who you're connected to online and what they have Google Plus One. So it's another example of how social media is affecting search engine results. 
If you want to see a great video about it, we have it at facebook.com slash agent evolution. Uh, and then uh, just a couple of other ones, and we're going to just skip over these really quickly. Backing up your site, can't say how enough how important this is. Backup buddy. Chad, what's the cost for this one really? Uh, I think it's about 50 bucks, um, but it is awesome, and it will back up to your Dropbox. And then the last one, um, in terms of performance, W3 total cash um, is our last one. Yeah, built by the guys behind Mashable. It's what does this on, one do? It makes your site faster. Okay. <laughs> we like that. And just a couple of quick resources. Uh, you know, you can reach out to us at mytechopinion.com. That's our blog where we provide free information, of course, and lots of good content. And, you know, we also uh, are in the business of creating uh, websites and Facebook pages that rock. So you can visit us <laughs> at agentevolution.com. And, of course, just... you can reach out to us. You want to chime in now with some say, questions here, say, not, not just any websites. I think you guys build some of the sexiest websites I've ever seen. Ooh, I oh, love that. Thank you. We do. We, <laughs> we try, you know. <laughs> um, we definitely we, try. We but, do but yeah, have definitely few... reach out to us. And then I know we have some questions, right? We definitely do have some questions. Um, some folks had asked here, you know, how easy is it to transfer a, let's say, a blogger blog or a typepad blog? How easy is it or difficult to port that over to WordPress? Do you guys help with that? From, from blogger, typepad, WordPress actually has an import tool. Um, so yeah. it's very simple. My tech opinion started on blogger, actually, back in the day before, you know, before we knew better. Uh, and we were able to port everything on over. So it, you can export out of those systems and import in from WordPress very easily. And it's really easy if you started in .com too. I know what uh, we also had some questions about what you know what what do you ask a web designer um, but you know it's easy I don't want to take your job. No 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 absolutely um, that was the next one actually. Do you have any <laughs> suggestions for anybody who is looking to work uh, with a web designer in terms of you know what questions they should ask? You know I think the biggest thing that you can do is um, Look to, look to see some of their work and make sure that it's real estate specific because there are, there are a lot of tools like IDX Press, like um, Altos Research, um, you know, these real estate specific tools that if you get a web designer that has experience in real estate, they're going to be able to make you a better site than someone who's you know, just sinking their teeth into this niche. Any other questions? Are there, there any one on hosting? Yes, one on hosting. Um, what hosting providers do you recommend? Any you know, that don't? We, we work with well? dozens, and HostGator is the one that we have kind of landed on. Um, good company. They're very much into WordPress. They are one of the preferred hosts. Um, someone recommended Bluehost. Bluehost is good. We left Bluehost at the end of last year with my tech opinion because of some outages and um, uh, slow performance. Uh, Bluehost is also nice because you can grow from just beyond a cheap shared environment should your website you know, grow and congratulations if it does. <laughs> um, and one other question here on plugins. How many is an optimal number of plugins to have and oh. Do you have any suggestions <laughs> on that? I would say less is more, but, but that's the short answer. Yeah, um, no, that's, that's the great answer. Uh, real estate agents with WordPress websites are notorious for putting a lot of plugins on. Um, and plugins add features, but they also add weight. And people don't want to wait for your website to load. So less is more. Um, we actually, when we redesigned My Tech Opinion at the end of the year, we kept it down to 11 plugins, and we were so pleased by it that we actually wrote a blog article about how we got rid of a dozen plugins. I would say a lot of the average website, the average website, 20 to 30 plugins. Uh, you go beyond that, and it's really excessive. It's very difficult to get below 20 and still get all the features that you're looking for. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for participating, Nick. Nick and Chad, thank you both very, very much for taking the time. Um, our pleasure. It was our pleasure. Thanks for inviting us. We'll make the slides available and the video recording available for anyone that wants to reference it for a later date. I know that a few folks asked if you'll have the plugin list that you guys sort of featured and some of the topics, uh, the blog topics available. 
Uh, so I will make sure that we either curate that into a list or just make the slides available. Yeah, why don't you make the slides available and we'll we'll put a list together too on MTO. So awesome. Uh, yeah, yay! Sounds Thanks, great. Easy. It was great. Uh, you know, we can't say enough great things about diverse and likewise. Uh, you know, I know it makes our clients day when they have a, a fabulous home search tool, a, a great tool on their website that makes their clients happy. So um, you know, we are happy to. to we'll, we'll hopefully come back again. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, well, you guys have a great day. All Thank right. you all for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.